everyone. This is a short lesson on Pythagorean triples. A Pythagorean triple consists of three positive integers, um, a, b, and c, such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, it's commonly written as uh, parentheses a, comma, b, comma, c, um, such as 3, 4, 5. If a, b, c is a Pythagorean triple, then so is k, a, k, b, and k, c. So basically what we're doing is um, knowing our Pythagorean triples, especially when you take your SAT test, so you're not, you're constantly not having to do the Pythagorean, um, figuring it out on your own. You can just memorize these. So this first row is called the uh, primitive Pythagorean triples. So if k is 1, we get our primitive Pythagorean triples. Now, if k is 2, and we're looking at this right here, if k is 2, we just multiply these numbers up front. So 2 times 3 is 6, uh, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10. Let's do this one. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 12 is 24, and 2 times uh, 13 is 26, and so forth. Now let's go down a little bit. If k is 3, then you multiply 3 by the primitive row. So the first row. So 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 5 is 15, and so forth. On the last slide, I have all the answers for you, and so forth, and so forth until you get to any number, k equals any number, then that would be n3, n4, and n5, and so forth. So basically what this means, and again, I have this the answers at the end, um, is when you're doing the Pythagorean th theorem, we know that 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So basically this is 9 plus 16 equals 25 or 25 equals 25. And these are called perfect squares. So 25 is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect squared, and 9 is perfect square. So let's try 8 15 and 17. So I'm going to put the 8 here, 15 here, and 17. Remember, the largest number always goes across from the right angle here. So we're going to square these. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. And when you add these up, you get 2... 89. So 17 squared is um, 289. Again, 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. Or 64 plus 225 equals 289. All right. So here are some ex more examples. Uh, we're leaving out the 8. So we have 8. Uh, this would be 15 if I go by size. And the larger number is always your hypotenuse that goes across from there. Um, and then we have the 9, 40, 41. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take this one and multiply it by 2. So if I multiply 3 by 2, this could be 6 and 3. 4 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 2 is 10. So that would be a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so your uh, primitive Pythagorean triples will always have one even number. So if we look at 3, 4, 5, we have one even number, which is 4. And the value for C, that means this number here, is always odd. So our C is odd, 
and many have two prime numbers. In our case, we have two prime numbers. Our next prim primitive triple is 5, 12, 13. Our C is always large, so uh, it's always odd. It's the largest. Our middle number is even, and 5 and 13 are both prime. Uh, let's try uh, 7, 24, 25. All right. Um, the value for C, which is this number, is uh, odd. We have one even, but we only have one odd. I mean, one prime number. And then you can go on and on. So that's called primitive Pythagorean triples. All right. And finally, this these are the answers. Um, I went ahead and put dots in here because you can just use a calculator to figure out more if you want. I also reverse this instead of saying N3, N4, and N5 like they did here. I just reverse it because it looks better. And for your SAT, the ones you need to know are the first row and probably maybe maybe this one but just know the first row and the first column so basically go down in here and make sure you're you're aware of these it's going to save you a lot of time on the SAT if you have these memorized and that's it thank you have a nice day bye bye